Want to skip to a specific segment? Use the timestamps in the description below. Hey Siri, what is the Waste of Time podcast? The Waste of Time podcast is an independently recorded podcast that covers a wide range of topics, hosted by Let's Talk Cars host Oliver Giles. Hello, welcome back to the Waste of Time podcast, episode number 19, recorded on a Saturday because of something we'll talk about later involving the internet company known as Viasat. Hello, Ben. How are you doing? Hey. I'm I'm doing just fine and dandy. We love Viasat in this house. Also, this is the first time uh, that we've actually both been using a computer since I got my new MacBook Pro, which I'll talk about in my personal slide. But I'm doing Zoom on a computer and Ben's doing Zoom on a computer, right? You are? On your end? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Actually, yeah. To be fair, I said that without knowing if you were using your phone or not, but now you're using, you're using your Mac. All right, cool. Anyway, let's no, move on to life in lockdown. Um, yeah. Okay, so as Oliver said, we're recording this on a Saturday, right? Yeah. So instead of our usual Thursdays. Now on Thursday, when we recorded this the first time, I was like, oh, the smoke is fine. It's totally fine. It's fine where I live. So yesterday, Friday, I go outside in the morning and the entire fucking house just starts smelling like smoke. Why? Because the smoke has gotten so much worse. Like, it's so bad right now. I can't even, I live next to a freeway. I can't even see 200 feet across it. It's really, really bad. Yikes. It smells disgusting. I thought I was going to be able to jog today, but I can't. Ben, so, do you, ben, do you have a photo so, of that? Yeah. Do you have a photo of the smoke from your house? Do you have a photo of that? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll just, I'll take one right now and I'll fucking send it. Cool. You can't see across the bay. You can't even see above my hedge. I mean, to be fair, you can't see across the bay a lot of times. It's San Francisco. That's just that's just pretty usual with the fog. You normally but, can. Yeah. Even with, well, at least where I live, you can totally see it. I'll just... I'll I remember just, when I lived there, uh, for, I was there from, was it 2012 to 2016 uh, for for fifth grade in middle school, right? When I was there, there was one time where... you remember? Do you remember my old apartment complex I was in at, uh, two, on two towns yes. Street? I could not see across the pool the, the other part of the building because it was that foggy. Game. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and that's like, yeah. That yeah, 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 yeah. The towns and apartments were great. We only ever left there because the rent kept going up and up and up. It was like, I think it was like something like 15, like 10 to 15% each year. It was it was insane. Um, yeah, it was, that's uh, San Francisco for you. So, yeah, so we moved to a nice house though, from there. Now, now I live here in uh, Watsonville again. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah, because the smoke where I live is not as bad. I don't have to wear a gas mask, but because like, I was outside, uh, you know, filming some stuff. So I didn't wear a gas mask that day when it was super smoky out. Cause I actually right next to the fires, right? Well, no, they've been kind of going down and moving away. I'm, I'm maybe within like thirty miles of the fires. Not th- they're, they're like in Morgan Hill and Gilroy, which are a good half hour from me. I think in general, so I'm not mm. that close to them. Uh, I think there, there might have been one down near Carmel, but again, like, not, like none of them were within like a thirty or forty minute drive of me. So I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, oh, thank you for the image, Ben. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, like, uh, the, the smoke's been getting a little bit better where I am. It still kind of smells like smoke. I still keep my downstairs window closed at night because I don't want smoke getting in my bedroom when I'm asleep. But, you know, um, it's, all, it's all going well in that case. I mean, it, it's get, it's getting better. Um, it's not great. There's still some smoke here, but it's definitely better than what it was when we recorded on Thursday. And especially, and actually way better than when we did the re-recording of episode 18 on... What day was that? Was that, was that, on, that was Tuesday. On, that was on Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Tuesday. This, this is the recording schedule with all the... We had two different types of technical problems with recording in last for the last few episodes. This one and the last one have been all like episode eighteen had some corruption issues, and episode nineteen, the original one recorded a few days ago, had some actually had a lot of latency issues. So we've been just having bad technical problems. Like I've been, I've just kind of like lost track of like when we recorded what at this point. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ben, your second general topic is hot outside. How hot is it where you are? Okay, well. Well, I said last time it was really it was getting hot or something it was like 70 or something not anymore I go outside it's like 60 degrees it's totally fine yeah so that topic is moot now at least where I am but where I mean, you are here it's a different story well I mean it kind of it's for me it's ranges between 65 and 70 but not like 70 and like blazing hot out it's just like 70 and it's nice and warm you know uh, it'll get to be about 55 at night which is nice and cool um, that type of stuff so you know uh, it's it's not as bad as it was. When we, when we when we did the episode eighteen re recording, that was that was that was hot out. That was really hot out. Um, like the last two weeks have been really hot, but it's getting getting better now. I think California just tends to, every summer we seem to have like two to three weeks of just like really hot weather, and then it seems to cool off again. Because like it's California, like okay, at least like Northern California summer. I can't really speak for LA, which is which I know is gets a lot of hot weather, especially around the summer. At least from what I know of it, right? Yay. Like the Southern California, I can't really speak for SoCal, but like for Northern California, for NorCal, right? 
uh, we tend to get, like, mostly, like, for, for most of the summer, it tends to be between, like, hot for us tends to be, like, maybe 75 to 80 degrees. And then we have also, but then, we, of course, we have a few weeks where it's extremely hot. Anyway, and it's, like, um, the one week in August where it gets, like, 95 degrees. Yeah, and, like, exactly, yeah. San Francisco gets fucked. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, at least it doesn't get super humid most of the time. But this time, but, but this past few weeks we had, but these past few weeks we had not only heat, but we also had smoke and lightning, all this other stuff. Anyway... Uh, Ben, uh, you have to, you gotta talk about your housing and also your dogs that have fleas. Oh my god! Okay, so, for housing, um, for UCI, we've recently gotten emails that we will actually have housing for the, uh, for the fall quarter, or at least I will. Um, they also say that you might not want to, um, we might not want to, yeah, Oliver, we're doing that. Um, we might not want to have, what's it called? We might not want to come back over Thanksgiving, right? So they're saying, don't go back to, if you go back to your house on Thanksgiving, please stay there over the summer. Uh, or sorry, over the winter. And I'm like, fuck that. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to be coming back to my house over Thanksgiving, I think. Um, Are you coming back for winter, though? Yeah, it's. For winter? What? Over winter? Yeah, yeah, over winter break for Christmas, 100%. So pretty much like, for Christmas. like, I guess like, I guess so, um, it's kind of same for like, I think it's like what my college is doing is like, they're like, okay, go, if you want to go home for Thanksgiving, you can. But then stay there because, like, for me, it's like Thanksgiving. Go back to college for two weeks and then go off for winter break. You don't really see the point in doing that. Which I mean, I could definitely, I can definitely see that from their point of view. So I'm probably gonna come back and just stay here because it's two weeks. Really, you know, I can do finals. Yeah. From, I can do finals from home. So that you know, type of stuff. But I, I, yeah, I mean, I can definitely like. It's more because again, like I, lo- I, lo- I would like to be on campus during those two weeks, but also. It's two weeks. I gotta drive. Yeah, I got. I gotta go from here to Oregon. But it's. It's just. It's just. It's. Pretty complicated. I'd just rather, you know, take the complication out of it and just stay here for those two weeks. Anyway, uh, Ben, dog, fleas. So moving on to, yeah, so I'm just going to start this with my entire house thing. So my dad is currently, um, well, actually, today they're saying they're actually letting him out. So yesterday they said he's going to be in the hospital for two extra days. He had a routine spleen surgery that they needed to uh, they need to do, uh, and he is doing much better now that's good to hear that's really it's finally yeah really good to like, hear he had a fever he was doing some pretty shit is they wanted to keep him in for tests for a few more days and i was just like what the fuck is going on um so my mom has been over with my dad the whole day every yeah. single day you know and there have been contractors in our house every day yeah, so your house is getting been... uh do you remember the, what was the exact terminology you used on the original version of this podcast Fucking! I remember what it was. Shit it on? No, don't, no, no. I don't remember. Go ahead, tell me. Let me know. Oh yes. I might just, okay, I might just that, intercut the original audio. Renovating that I don't know. the upstairs. That's yeah. a good idea. If, if, if it's not too laggy, anyway, the, the original upstairs. audio was shit. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. They're renovating the entire upstairs. Um, they're making like ver noises every day. Oliver said it sounded like two people having sex. Um, so he says, I said um, it sounded like it's a more accurate statement. Yeah. Having sex. Okay. Loud. Anyways, yeah. Um, anyway, you get the point. So then on top of that, my dogs have fleas and we need to work on their flea medication and shit. Oh boy. That's not and fun. And... Yeah, things at my house right now are very, very complicated. By complicated, I mean fucking shitty. So I'm ready to leave, and I'm ready for my dad to come home today. So isn't your brother also sharing your room um, when he's doing his school work as well? Used- yes. Oh my god. Okay. So we all have to share one downstairs room, and I actually now have access to my mom's monitor for work because she's out That's every good. day. At, with my dad at the hospital so i i since i got a new attachment for my macbook now i can actually watch stuff on the um on the thing Wait, is it is it not a airplay and smart monitor or is it just a monitor it's just a regular it's just like a like a monitor that somebody same uses like for work it's i it's i actually same. like my my mine is a 2016 1080p it's a decent monitor it was not that much money um i got for, actually for my dad's old work because they didn't want it anymore so they gave it to me Actually, they gave it to my dad, and they gave it to me. But still, mm. like I was actually thinking, it's not a smart monitor. It's just basic monitor. It's got two HDMI and an old VGA just for backwards compatibility. I don't know. But anyway, like but I was actually thinking about getting like an AirPlay monitor just to do, do AirPlay. I'm like, you know, what? I'm just gonna get an adapter instead. It's much simpler. Yeah, exactly. It's much less expensive. It's, it's, it's 
Like three dollars is really good picture quality too. Yeah. So that's a good sign too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So everything's going back to normal today. Uh, it's much better than it was last time around. See, this entire week, my dad hasn't been at home. Uh, and yeah. he's been doing this situation. My brother is learning downstairs in my room every day, so I get kicked out during the day. Uh, and then he has to do his homework or whatever. And now he's playing Fortnite in the room next to me because he does it all the time. Every is that day. is that like your so, like downstairs living room kind of thing? Is that you're talking about the other room next to you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the downstairs living room is where I live now. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right, Oliver. So you have two new topics. Uh, you want to you um, talk about them? I do have two. I might have a third if you have time. Anyway, so uh, computer. I got a new MacBook Pro. I don't know the exact specs, but it's the top, it's the top memory, top processor. It's the 13-inch MacBook Pro with a student discount. I bought it. I think I mentioned. I, I think I, I, I think the original recording of this podcast, Ben, you asked me how much it was. It, I don't yeah. know, but it's cheaper with a student discount for for colleges, right? The college student discount. It's still expensive because it's a Mac, and yeah. if it wasn't, if, I mean, like. If it was the same exact computer, like the same specs, same everything, but did not have the Apple name on it, right? You can guarantee it would be about six hundred dollars less expensive. But True. I mean, it's yeah. What are you gonna do? I mean, but it was still it was still a lot cheaper than the uh, than it would have been otherwise. Plus, I got like was it an AirPods Pro for 90, for ninety bucks, which I'm actually enjoying quite a bit, and a bunch of other cool stuff. But I also recently ordered a case and an adapter for it, adapter for multiple USB into it, uh, Lightning. As well as with that other stuff, um, you mean a HDMI. Dongle. <laughs> yep, that, that yeah, a dongle, yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, yeah. Well, Any, anyway, though, um, dongle or dharma but yeah, so I, I, I got a new computer, and actually, that's what we're using right now to do the Zoom call. It's 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 pretty good. And I had a weird thing, so I tried to install um, so an, an internet browser. It wasn't Safari, and definitely not Chrome. So I installed Firefox, but it would not install necessarily drivers to run Hulu. I don't know why. It just said, "Oh, it's installing." It, it said it was installing for two days and would not install. So I decided to install Brave. A instead, driver? Which, uh, not driver. Um, sorry. Uh, you know the uh, what add-ons or extensions, whatever it is. Like, is it like if you, it's with Firefox? It's not a driver, but I forget the actual actual name for it. But you know, it's it's something. That it's it, it needs to, like install things to like run certain video stuff like Hulu, right? Anyway, yeah, I don't think Apple supports that. Uh, well, no, it does because I well, it does it does because I, I did on my old computer, and also anyway, I installed um, a Brave browser, which I actually have on my phone as well. It's it's pretty much imagine Chrome, but it's been updated since the year two thousand nine, and it actually has safety features and is good. And also, you can use oh, Chrome no. extensions with it too, so you can use like Chrome extensions on it, which is which is lovely. It also has built in ad block, which is absolutely great. Um, and wow. and they were and ran fine on that, but also. I, I installed the Brave launcher, right? And it wouldn't let me launch it. I don't know why. So I, I'm like, I'm like, you know what? It's already 11.30 at night. I'm just going to close my computer and just, you know, go play some video games and go to bed. And so I, then I opened it up yesterday, right? Yesterday morning after I left it overnight, just, you know, in sleep mode, turned off like normal. And then it worked. The thing is, I don't know why it worked, which is confusing. I don't know what, I don't know what oh, li, 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 letting it just sit there overnight did, with, you know, in sleep mode, but whatever. Anyway... I also have to talk about roommate situation. I think I mentioned this episode 18 in the re-recording. Um, so pretty much I was essentially kind of double booked. Oh, no, I wasn't double booked. I was accidentally kind of booked in two different rooms. And since then, one of those two people has decided that, that they're just going to not go until... It's, it's a situation more normal, so they're not going to go on-site until, I guess, what, I guess, maybe the January term starts, right? And the other student has just left... Uh, oh, well, sorry. He disappeared from my roommate page on the housing portal. Actually emailed my college about this like hey um what happened here he t- like oh sorry we can't tell you because it could be any number of confidential stuff which i guess makes sense um but so i guess right now i'm essentially getting a single room for the price of a double which is cheaper which is good um Same. i mean i still i still, I still have the suite mates oh you're like, getting a single room or you're getting a double room well i'm getting i'm getting a double room with only me room? in it that's sweet. So I got, I've got, I I've got more too. space to do everything. It's great. Actually, I think I'm about to be a quad. Yeah. So, okay, so, 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 so like, they don't so, like, move the beds. So, yeah, I know. Exactly. Yeah, I can move all the stuff around. But also, like, in SLU, like, at least in the Shasta dorm, right, the way it works is, like, it's, um, you know, it's, it's you know, it's, obviously, obviously, like, one long hallway and all the floors with dorms on either side of it. But then, like, it's a dorm and then a bathroom hallway and another dorm. So it's, like, it's, it, I've got suite mates on the other side of that. But, you know. But in the actual dorm room, it's just it, right, as of right now, it's just me. They said they might reassign me at some point. I, I probably have a another roommate for the um for the se- for the second semester uh, in January. But for right now, it's just me and a double a double room by myself. 
Also, and quickly mention this third one I didn't write down here. Ants. Fuck ants. Yeah, so um, last time that we did this, I said, we're going to be retiring the Wild Man Oliver report. And Oliver said, you know what, Ben? Oliver, can you do a flashback? Is that possible? Um, sure. Blue, blue. Oh, Wait, yeah. hold up. Before we do that, I think this is the, the best time to, to, uh, to retire. We should probably retire Wild Man Oliver. Because I don't know if you're ever going to be back in that tent again. And I think we need to give it its proper send off. No, By Ben. Way, it's ben, no. I, I will go back in that tent tonight just to fucking spite you. This segment lives on. Just, just. Okay. Flashback. All right. Anyways, Oliver's like, Oliver's just like, okay, Ben, uh, because you said that, now I'm going to do it another week just to piss you off. And so that is this segment. Welcome to Wild Man Oliver. I slept Part in the tent the one night. It wasn't very smoky. Know. It was nice out there. 55 degrees, nice and cool. Nothing got into the big hole in the tent. Um, I actually need to film myself oil? leaving that tent through the hole. Anyway, I'm, gonna, I'm just going like, to climb through the ho- a hole inside of my tent. Which, but if, you guys, if you guys didn't listen to episode 18, the wind from the lightning storm ripped my tent. Massive hole inside my tent. So, you know, I'm going to climb through that and end the segment. So I think at this point, it is done. So I'm in all over segment is done. We have to college in a few weeks, so it'll probably be done by then anyway. But yeah, it, it's it's over. He's gonna camp in his dorm room. Yeah, they, they, sure. Right? Why why not? Yeah, no, I might continue if I ever go camping with some friends during college at some point. You know, once this whole COVID thing clears up eventually, maybe. Special but you know, you know, Oregon has some great spots for camping, especially around Ashland. Um, but yeah, you know, for right now, while my Oliver update is on indefinite is on indefinite hold. I think I'll say that much. It's it's done for now. What's that? Anyway, I wrote okay, one well, word on the next I'm slide, and Ben over. totally wrote more. Ben, do you want to explain what you wrote on this slide? Because I wrote Viasat. Um, so, basically, if you're watching this Viasat, which I know you are because we added you in every single Instagram thing. Oh, by the way, guys, Viasat has an Instagram account. We're going to put it in the description. I need you to go to it and comment. Uh, yo, wait, why did you do my boys at the Waste of Time podcast dirty? Yeah. Uh, make sure you ben, do that. Ben, do you want to read what, what you wrote on the slide? Long. Yeah, so on the side, I wrote, Viaset fucked my wife, and that might have been, like, a slight misstatement. You know, maybe they didn't do that. I don't know. Personally, I'm still trying to figure myself out. Um, but uh, what I do know is they definitely fucked over my podcast. So, yep. I mean, you want to you wanna, you wanna explain that, Oliver? So, Viaset, so, okay, where I live, I live out in, as I've said before, in the Watsonville Hills, you know, Monterey County. It's a nice place to live out here, and I would... I think I've said before, I'd rather live here with pretty poor internet or with decent to poor internet most of the time than live in San Francisco where I can't really go out without wearing a mask. I think it's like around here, like, okay, like if you're out in public, of course, wear a mask. Around where I live, I can go on a five mile walk, maybe run into one person. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, I'm drinking a bubble water. Sorry. Uh, anyway. There we go. <laughs> I burped. Sorry about that. Anyway, but point being, like, anyway, where I live, you got two options really for, I mean, okay, so. Actually, it actually varies differently depending on, like, where you live. Like, a mile from me, they can get, um, like, actually good, like, HughesNet satellite. Like, actually good, like, satellite. I think it's, like, HughesNet as a company. But anyway, like, a mile from me, they can get, like, really, like, actually, like, like, as, like you know, like, uh, satellite good enough that you can actually play, like, high-speed internet gaming on. But where I live, I got two options. at t DSL, which, if you take that out of your house, they're not putting it back in. So, fuck. And also, Viasat. Which is a satellite company. It actually has several other names, technically speaking, and uh, I've had so many problems with the company before. Like it's it's better than <sighs> okay, so it makes online gaming a bit of a pain in the ass some of the time, but sometimes it works well. Um, but anyway, uh, they're they're not. It's since it's a satellite company, so Ben, I'm, uh, so um, you don't you don't you don't have Hulu, do you? Or do you? No, I don't. Anyway, so uh, I like I don't really have I don't really have like cable TV or anything like that. So like we get we so I watch baseball through Hulu Live Sports, right? And that's that's very dependent like on what state you live in. Like if I live in uh, if if my Hulu account is registered to Colorado, I can't get the Giants game, for instance. So or sorry, with it, or, if the, or if the sorry, if the internet connection registered to the main device, I believe is in like another state. So since it's satellite, it, the internet the connection itself comes from somewhere else. So when we first connected the Hulu Live Sports, it said, "Oh, you live in Chicago." No, I fucking don't. No, absolutely <laughs> not. 
Because like, oh, sorry, and then, like, and then, like, again, like, so like, we actually turned off, we actually turned off Hulu Live Sports um, over the off season because like, again, it's it's a, it's like it's a decent amount of money to watch sports, which like, which I'm fine. With. I, like, I like watching baseball, you know, but like when it's not when it's when it's the off season for baseball, I don't really want to watch anything else. What's the point of keeping it around? Um, you know what I mean? So like, so like, anyway, so, like, I think it's like anyway. A few months ago, when we went to, when we went to go reconnect it. it. Said, oh, you live in San Diego. No, that's not. We do not live in San Diego. No, we do not. Uh, I do not want to just watch Padres games. Thank you very much. So Viasat is a annoying pain in the ass. Um, you know the upload speeds are normally pretty good to be honest, but the download speed is absolutely atrocious most of the time. Like normally it's like once you hit your forty gigabyte per month cap, you drop down to five megabits per second, which is not great, but also at least you can do things with that. You can at least watch steady video on that, right? You can at least do Zoom calls on that. But look. That's not the case. We, we, we tried to record this on Thursday night. One, but between 0.7 and 1.1 megabits per second. It was horrible. Viasa, if you're listening to this, it's the year 2020. I don't think it's too much to ask to be able to, you know, have a Zoom call without video, just audio, right? At the time of any time past 6.30 p.m. I don't think it's too much to ask. I, don't, I also don't think it's too much to ask to stream live sports we're paying quite a my family's paying quite a bit of money for this connection without interruption because like you know most of the time it's like a black screen every few minutes and it's really really fucking annoying. Fire that you suck. I'm just saying, fire I'm just saying, fire It's the year 2020. Our latency doesn't have to be 20, 20 fucking seconds. That that Dude, yeah that like that's good. 30, that's good. It was like 30 seconds. It was. Lazy. It was horrible. Oliver and I could not hear ourselves talk. Like, because we would constantly interrupt each other for no reason. And I would be in the middle of a diatribe and he'd just be like, then he'd start talking too. And we wouldn't understand if we cut each other off. Yeah. And it you, sucks. I think right now the latency is maybe like 0.8 seconds, which is much more manageable. Also, at some point, I might just upload the raw audio file to YouTube of the, like, you know, it's just with no editing at all, of just, of this, like, how bad the audio quality was throughout the entirety of our original recording of this podcast, of episode 19, because it was, it was horrible. Uh, that's, that's why we're, that's why we're recording it in the afternoon so. now instead of at night like we normally do. Anyway, um, anything else you want to say about Viasat, Ben? Uh, yeah, Viasat had sexual relations with my wife. I would like them to stop, and I'd like them to come to my address right now so we can ash this out. All right. Um, if, if, also, if anyone were, were also that address, if anyone wanted to know. All right. Okay. Um, actually, uh, yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. So now we're gonna move on to the next segment, which is of course the MLB report. Now, if I don't have a new intro here, I've been busy with pretty much a lot of things. So making a new intro takes time, and I'll try to get one going for the next episode. Maybe I don't know. It just it just takes a while. Uh, I, have to get, as a, I have to gather the clips from recent games and make the MLB report intro. Anyway, let's get in with the MLB report standings and starting out with in the NL West as normal. The Dodgers now lead the NL West with a record of 24 wins and 10 losses. They're probably going to be in the playoffs again. And I mean, they've been in playoffs, was it like the last ten, eight, eight of the last, like I think it was like yeah, the last eight seasons. They've lost every single time. So yeah, I mean, I predict nine playoff appearances, nine straight losses. So anyway, moving on to the NL Central, the Cubs. Uh, 18 and 13. No surprise there. They've been leading, I think, since week one. Now, the NL East. Uh, I think I mentioned this before, but, like, originally with the whole Marlins COVID thing going on, right, they missed a few games. That's that's why, like, that's why they had the best winning percentage for a while. That's kind of evened out now. The Marlins are in second place with a record of, uh, in, in the NL East with a record of 14 and 13 behind the Braves, who have a record of 18 and 14. And also, uh, we kind of have to talk about the whole Cardinals thing because they haven't played a, they, they've not, They've they've missed some games. I'll say that much. Their current record, there's there's actually second in the um, NL Central just because the winning percentage is kind of skewed because they missed some games just like the Marlins did. The Cardinals record again, like Cardinals second in the NL Central record is eleven and twelve. All right, so now moving on <laughs> to the um, the the American League, of course, because I don't know why we do all these don't want second, but whatever. Okay, anyway, the American Wait, League. Wait, did you talk about the strike yet? Oh, I didn't. I should probably mention. I'll, I'll mention that after the standings, right? Because that kind of goes into that anyway so um anyway uh al west the a's 22 wins 10 losses absolutely destroying it they're 4.5 games from the astros also for those who don't know 0.5 games because not all teams play on the same day so there's sometimes there are days off where other teams play it's like some the schedules don't always match up this way you get 0.5 games but it all tends to smooth out by the end of the season anyway anyway so yeah a's leading the a- a- a's leading the al west with 22 wins 10 losses <laughs> AL Central, the Chicago White Sox are tied with the Cleveland Indians for first place with, tw- with 20 wins and 12 losses. 
And in the AL East, the Rays are leading. I've been saying this for the past few weeks, and it's still weird to say this. Uh, 22 wins, 11 losses. They are three and a half games above the New York Yankees. That's just really, really weird. Anyway, as Ben, as, as ben mentioned, we have to talk about the, um, the baseball strike. So to protest, black, to, to, to protest a bunch of, well, I guess, you know, the, you know, the most recent you know, Black Lives Matter shootings. And just, you know... Talk about this in the, um... We'll talk about this in the news. Yeah, we will. I'll also, I'll also talk about it here. But, you know, just to protest Black Lives Matter in general, as well as a recent shooting, um, you know, they, they, a, lot, mo- a lot of the baseball teams around the league for the past few days have been not playing games. Now, the first day, a lot of people were mildly annoyed about, I want sports, blah, blah, blah. But yesterday was Jackie Robinson Day, which that kind of brought up a whole... That kind of brought a whole new aspect into the whole striking on that day kind of thing. And if you go to any MLB team's post that day, if they decided to not play, it's a toxic fucking mess. Mm. Uh, I mean... Yeah. MLB fans. Uh, racist MLB fans. Yeah. Fucking shut up. <laughs> also, like, I think it's like on the Astros post because they didn't play a lot of people. I, I'm not, I'm not going to watch the Astros anymore. I'm like, and I actually commented... Oh yeah, great. They're really gonna miss you. They're uh, you know, they're really gonna miss one view per game or one ticket sale. They're not. And a lot of people were yeah, saying that they fun. wouldn't have done it if they were actually, you know, if 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 that was actually an in-person game. And I'm not quite sure. Maybe they wouldn't have done it. Maybe they would. I'm not quite sure about that. But you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You know, if this keeps going on. I mean, on. the fact that the players decided to strike without the commissioner's approval. Yeah. Like the players' stroke. Yeah. Struck, this, that's, this is this, that's really powerful. This is the players. This is not a commissioner. It's not, major, it's, it's not a commissioner-driven thing. This is the player-driven <laughs> thing, which is really, again, like they're on the spotlight. They're athletes. People like people follow them. People listen to them. They're using their platform to actually promote something good, which is just really impressive. Yeah. But yeah, continue to continue to be like yeah, it's like. Message to the MLB and to to everyone who has the power for people to listen to them. Continue to support. If you continue to you know do people uh, yeah, sorry continue to like do what you think is right to for justice. You know if you have people listening to you, do what you can to help this world and help justice. It's a human rights thing. It's not like Black you Lives Matter is not a fucking saying. political thing. Black Lives Matter is a human rights thing. If you don't think Black Lives Matter, you're fucking dumb. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, maybe your life doesn't matter then. Hashtag four to lives don't matter. Four to lives don't matter. <laughs> that is actually a hashtag on Instagram. It has one post. Oh no! It's not even related okay. to that. It's just a random um, hashtag. Anyway, let's. Uh, you want to move on, Ben? Because next yeah, up is your slide. On. This is Ben's slide. It's time for mine. So we're gonna keep this one really brief because last time that we did this, it was like I don't know, like a good thirty minutes, and we need to we need to move up uh, pretty quickly. Um, so the problem. The problems in the world are, were exacerbated uh, from Monday to Thursday as the Republican National Convention was swooping through Washington, D.C. What so, a fucking um, shit show. It was a shit show. First, I mean, the, We knew it was going to be a shit that, show, uh, but oh boy, it was just almost entertaining to watch because of how bad it was. But at the same time, you also got to realize this is the American government. This is the, I guess, yeah. current party in power kind of like... This is part of the government. It would be funny if it was fictional, if it was some sort of like satirical skit, but it wasn't. It was our actual government saying things and doing things, which is just disturbing. People started, I mean, people were like screaming. There was this one person whose name was Kimberly Guilfoyle. And let me just say, if, you're, if your last name's Guilfoyle, you're obviously up to something evil. I'm sorry. Yeah. There's, I've never known any good fucking Guilfoyle. That just, that just sounds gross to me. To sorry. be fair, how many people do you know with the name Guilfoyle? Zero, other than that one person. So, all right, just sounds like Doyle. I don't know. Anyways, it does. So, um, we we also need to talk about like every night the president gave a speech. The Republicans actually do not have a platform this year. Instead, what they're deciding to do is blindly follow the president into everything he does. They are making a really good case why I should vote for Joe Biden. I, I, I thought that DNC made a good case of why I shouldn't vote for Joe Biden because they were all just like, oh, okay, well, we're not, we're not radical. We won't do shit. Nothing will change. And then the Democrats are like, Joe Biden's a Marxist. He's going to fucking kill everyone. He's a fucking loser. Only Trump can protect us from the America that Trump created. So, yeah. Anyways, basically, 
at a um at a Trump rally. Actually, it wasn't a Trump rally. I, I mean, I guess the whole thing was just one giant fucking Trump. Rally. Pretty much, yeah. To be honest, it. I think you're uh, right about that. Yeah, it. it was just one big Trump rally. Yeah, definitely. At one of the um at one of the nights, Senator Rand Paul had to be escorted out because protesters over. You, are you ready to hear this? They were saying mean words. Oh no! They, they were mean to him. Oh I can't. No. Oh, how did how did he survive? Holy shit! Oh my god! I'm so sorry. People speaking Rand negatively Paul. about a person Rand in politics. Rand I don't think I've ever heard Rand. of that before. Oh no! Fucking Whoa. what? God damn! He has a security detail, and then the, and then conservatives are like, "That means Rand Paul's oppressed." He's literally in the halls of power, you dumbass. He's literally making legislation. You stupid. He is in power. They know. He's like, what the fuck? Rand Paul is not a press. No. And also, there was an old couple, and this and this one guy decided to just flip them off because they had Trump hats on. He's like, is this the state of America? It's like, yes, that is the state of America because you fucking turned it into it, and yeah, you should have like, punched them. Sorry, it's, 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 like, it's, like, it's like it's like it's like it's like America looks like this now, and you're pretty much one of the causes of why it looks like this. Yeah, you you kind of like you're like it's like it's like yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, like it's like it's like it's like the Republican Party seems shocked that America is like this right now, and they're one of the big reasons why. Also, what about the whole Karen and Ken thing? Well, I'm, I know they're not shocked. No. Oh like, my god! I, I, so I think it's like Karen certain members Ken, of the party seem shocked. Perfect... Oh my god, Karen! We fuck their names. Who gives a shit? They're in St. Louis, and remember how I told you that Cory Bush was like leading them, and Cory Bush is like. This uh, this this justice democrat who yep. I really like, she's like fighting for working family stuff like that. They're like, there's a radical Marxist Democrat that was elected to St. Louis, and now I think the Democrats are Marxists. Oh, and it was just like, no. Also, <laughs> no, she just thinks black people deserve rights. Yeah, ass. I saw. Yeah, yeah. I mean. <sighs> I mean, you know, it's politics, so they'll try to twist anything to their. I want to live in their... a world that Republicans like, say we live in. It's yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, also, it's it's politics. They'll twist anything to their point of view to make it to make it suit their argument. But also, I see some very funny comments that says, "Oh, Black Lives Matter is Marxist and fascist." It's just funny how some people how don't realize how that doesn't make any sense because they're pretty much polar opposites. That's like saying Black Lives Matter is Democrat and Republican. Yeah, or, it's... <laughs> yeah, I guess so, yeah. It's just, the United, they're opposites. Fucking Iowa is Florida and California. Yes! <laughs> they're mutually excl... Actually, no, wait. Florida and California are closer than you'd think. But yeah. Yeah. Let's transition out of the RNC. Fuck the RNC. Fuck Trump. Fuck the Fuck them. Fuck everyone. Fuck everybody. Fuck me. Fuck you. Fuck everybody. Anyways, let's do our, our weekly promo. Let's start with the Patreon. Oliver, you want to you wanna try this one since you tried it last time and then uh, I liked it? Sure. Why not? So we have a Patreon. It is absolute <laughs> garbage. Um, congratulations to everyone who's not donated. By the way, we still have no donations, so our message is getting through. Do not donate there at all. We will just waste your money for your waste of time. So if you want to waste your money, donate there, but please don't. <laughs> Uh, but honestly, this slide has not been taking over something, like, this, this started out as just a Patreon joke slide, but it's been taking over something more important. We gotta talk about the vaccine, because that's honestly mm -hmm. infinitely yeah. more important than our stupid Patreon. Ben, let's talk about the vaccine. Yeah. So, make sure not to donate to the Patreon and use that money for the vaccine. Okay, so, we have two vaccines to talk about today, one of them that is not being created yet, and one of them that has. So, the coronavirus vaccine, you may have heard in the news, we're going to talk about this in the news section, uh, some, some stuff about immunity, and I'll explain to you later why that, does, that still means you should get the vaccine. Um, don't panic, but you should also get the vaccine. Yes. Remember, you are putting the safety of yourself, your family, and everyone around you at risk if you don't take the vaccine. If you listen to this and you already take the vaccine, great. But the thing is, we need you to do, we need you to tell everyone. Like, if, if somebody in your family is anti-vax, ask them, why are you anti-vax, right? Yeah. Like, just get to the bottom of it. And don't, like, say you're trying to change their mind, but kind of push them towards it. Because it's important that we get anybody to take this vaccine by any means necessary. Yeah. If you need to strap them down and give them the vaccine... The Waste of Time podcast cannot say that we condone that, but yeah, I mean, that, doesn't, that doesn't actually that actually doesn't sound allegedly. legal. Uh. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, yeah. allegedly. Anyways, see if I say allegedly, that means it's legal. All right, politics. Just yeah. murder someone Legality, allegedly, yeah. allegedly. Anyways, <laughs> so the second vaccine we need to talk about is the flu. 
we have been told by public health experts that they do not want to have a dual pandemic, meaning you don't want to have the flu virus happening at the same time as you have the coronavirus happening. Yeah, absolutely. Because that can lead to a bunch of people becoming automatically immunocompromised and fucking dying. Yeah. So get your flu vaccine this year. It is I'm actually the getting most my shot vaccine next you week my, in your life. Shot. I'm trying to schedule an appointment right now uh, to get a shot with either a pharmacy or a doctor. I don't know. Um, so I, cause I need to get it for school, but not only that, yeah, I'm same. also doing it so I can do my part cause I need yeah. it. Uh, and we all need to take it and everyone here, even if you've never gotten the flu vaccine, even if it makes you sick for a little bit, you should still get the flu vaccine because at the end of the day, it's better for you to get, to not get the flu in the long run than it is to, I mean, like don't get the flu in the long run and have like a little bit of symptoms versus have no symptoms right now. And then later on have the full blown flu, potentially get the coronavirus. Exactly. Yeah. So I would take one of the risks. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. And the next one is taking a, another somber tone. So start with our weekly fuck 12. Don't play the intro. Yeah, I'm not going uh, to. I'm not, not going to play the intro this time because so, it's just too heavy. Once yeah. again, once again, there has been a police shooting in the United States. So Jacob Blake, this man who... Police detectives say some shit about him, like he was running from a sexual assault charge or he was had a knife and he was trying to steal a car or some shit, uh, which we'll get into later why that's not true. Um, it, basically, he was walking to his car. The story say that he, the original story was that he was breaking up a fight between two people, uh, got into his car and drove away, and then the police shot him seven times in his back. Okay. Right. Um, now, let's say, first off, his kids were in the car, so it makes very little sense of why he would want to steal the car that belonged to him and his kids yep. were in. It also makes little sense why he would get a knife and try to kill police officers in front of his children. So that, that's kind of a bullshit argument. Um, and secondly, even if he was fleeing from a sexual assault charge or even if he was fleeing from a fucking thing, that still doesn't give you license to, to <laughs> attempt to kill him and shoot him seven times in the back yeah right like if, what he did was horrible but what he should be he should be fucking not killed right like you don't kill someone for that you give them a fair yeah, trial exactly if yeah you don't give them a fair trial you know that we're doing guilty until proven innocent yeah so pretty much he wasn't an angel all right i'll no. say that he wasn't a saint no. but that doesn't fucking mean that you yeah. should kill him. Like, it's like, it's You've like, probably it's like, done something wrong it's too. Like, it's like it's like it's like what he may have done does yeah, not justify else. this. Exactly. So he has been paralyzed from the bottom, uh, from his legs down because of this. Uh, he's handcuffed to his hospital bed, and the police were expecting him to probably die, so he wouldn't tell his side of the story. So we're so, waiting for him so wait, to tell wh his. Wh side wh of the what story. is his current condition, now, Ben? Do you know? In he's he's totally he's fine. He's conscious. Um, well, he's not he's fine, going to make yeah. it, we think. Well, yeah, I think, I think well, fine might be the wrong yeah. word to use, but yeah. Yeah. So basically, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where this happened, there were protests. And this man, uh, this 17-year-old who was my age, we're actually going to get into more detail because a lot more shit has come out uh, in the past few days that we've been recording this. And a lot more fucking fascist talking points have been, <sighs> have been stated out. Yep. So this is what we're going to do. Um... Basically, <laughs> this 17-year-old motherfucker, I'm not going to say his goddamn name because he doesn't deserve that. He no. had a grocery bag thrown at him by a protester because he had a loaded gun and he was pointing it at people. He had somebody chase after him because he had a loaded gun and he was pointing it at people. And he was about to pull the trigger and he did. After, and then he pulled the trigger and some people went over and tried to stop him with a the skateboard. Then he shot them. He shot somebody else. All in all, three people were shot. Two people fucking died from it. So, what did the right wing do? What did the police do? Well, the police said, guess what they did? Guess what they did. Didn't they give him Just water or something again. before that happened? They gave him water. They yep. gave him water before. They did. News stories were published about this guy. He scrubbed off graffiti before. So, he's a good guy, guys. He was a, he was a saint. This guy that shot... Three fucking innocent people who were just chasing after him because he had a fucking gun that was pointing it at people. Perfect. Perfect. He's a saint. This kid, people have been defending him and saying that the people that he killed were pedophiles and rapists and criminals. 
No, they weren't. Yeah. I'm sorry. I cannot find one single fucking source besides a stupid right wing Instagram infographic that has said that the people that this guy killed were criminals. It's not true. And also, Obviously. like, no matter, no matter, no matter, no matter, no matter like, where you get it from, if it's an Instagram infographic, that's already kind of subject to. You need to do more research on it because it's an Instagram fucking infographic. They never cite their sources on those things. Yeah, so I just, know. Ugh. And there's Basically, a very good reason why they don't cite their sources because their sources either don't exist or are wrong. Sources, dude, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so the fucking... Uh, the smear job that people have been doing on Jacob Blake is not really working. And the police, the police idea of them that he had a sexual assault charge or whatever and he was a criminal. First off, we don't even know if that was the case. That's what the police are saying. But the police mm-hmm. also said that George Floyd died because he was taking drugs and he had COVID. So I don't really give a fuck about what yeah. they say, honestly. I don't really trust them. Um, but the, 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 the other guy, finally, this dude has been arrested. The, the guy that shot up the protest. But he was arrested after four hours because the police let him go. And because people are like, it's obviously in self-defense. He was defending himself from what? From a fucking from, from grocery what? bag? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, you, there's a video that's, that's been shown. People are like, it's a Molotov cocktail. It's not. It's, it's not. a fucking Coke it, can it, yeah. in a goddamn grocery bottle. Yeah. It's, it's, we're not going to show the video because it's very disturbing. Yeah. But three people, two people lost their lives from this thing. And it's very, very important that we give them the respect that they deserve because they fucking died. And if you fucking smear them for being pedophiles and shit because, oh, you're no angel, blah, blah, blah. You're fucking wrong. You're, you're stupid. Like A grocery bag is not... Yeah, violence. It's also like any time we have to mention on this podcast. Like, I mean, the news has all it's been pretty heavy since very early on this podcast. But also, we have to mention that a seventeen-year-old, yeah. a minor, shot three people and killed two of them. That's just, it's just disturbing, yeah. disappointing, whatever you want to call it. It's just really not right. It's just so horrible. I said as we were recording, this guy's my age. Yeah, I, 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 I hate to say it, but I went through a lot of the same stuff that he did. I was once in my life in sophomore year, I really couldn't find a, couldn't really find a way. It was really, uh, I had some pretty shitty, chuddy views. It was pretty ass. Um, and just to think that could have been me. I could have, I could have done something like that if I hadn't have fucking changed yeah, my way. It really is scary. And by yeah. the way, if you're defending this guy, it really is. If you're defending this guy and saying that this was in self-defense... If you're smearing the victims of murder because of this, uh, I just want to say, and if you know anyone else that is, uh, just fuck off. Stop listening. Don't, like, okay. In some cases, we we all agree that maybe self-defense is warranted, right? Somebody has a knife, yes. right? Somebody has a knife, totally warranted. Yes. But if you have a loaded gun and you're shooting it at people, yeah. right? If you have a loaded gun, you're pointing it at people and going to a protest where nobody else is armed, by the way. Yeah. And maybe they should arm themselves because of that. But if you're doing that, you, I mean, some person might very well want to protest against you. <laughs> yeah. And you have to be the bigger person and realize that if you, re- if you react to that and you kill them, that's fucking murder. This it's is going to sound very justified. oversimplistic, what I'm about to say, but really, self-defense is only self-defense when it's actually self-fucking-defense. <sighs> yeah, exactly. Who, Going to a protest with a from? with a loaded like, gun and killing people who weren't really doing anything violent, especially not towards you, is not self-defense. Yeah. It's murder is what that it is. Being said, that being said, if somebody was pointing a gun at this guy... And if he, if he, someone was pointing a gun at this guy and telling him, I'm going to shoot you, maybe we could see something different. Yeah. But, but that's not I the don't case. Think that's not the case. No. Have done that. Yeah. And I think, honestly, no violence is being done to these. The, the worst is happening is police are getting rocks and bottles thrown at them. Yeah. And, okay, fucking deal with it. That's what you took on when you decided to do this shitty fucking job. Yeah. That, that's your choice. Yeah. Leave. But black people can't stop being black, you know? Yeah. Um, it's just fucking horrible. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I think that if, if something like this has to continue, uh, protesters need to defend themselves. They're, they're, we need to and have also, them we're not going to stop talking about it either. The news is, yeah, this news, it also, the news, like, on this podcast, we're not going to stop talking about it. This will be the news. It will continue to be heavy. We'll continue talking about the things that need to be talked about. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> with that being said, we're going to this this whole week's just a shit ton of sad news, and I'm really sorry about that. Um, but we're gonna have to talk about COVID nineteen and. Recently, actually, cases have also been going down everywhere throughout the United States because re, um, social distancing and mask mandates have actually worked. So thank you, everyone, for wearing your mask and for socially distancing and for being yeah. safe. Um, but there's been some troubling news out of Hong Kong and San Francisco uh, and basically where we live. Um, reinfections can happen. So when we recorded this podcast last time, I said they are only not severe symptoms. And we have learned that a man has uh, contracted severe symptoms of COVID-19 after being infected asymptomatically the first time. So it so looks it, like yeah, so your body I mean, can it's, it's get different, really different symptoms, like different, different, well, it's like a different type of the virus, but it still very much is COVID-19. And so technically speaking, you can get, yeah. I guess, you know, re, uh, yeah. You You can can get get, it twice. Yeah, you can get it twice. But the good news is in the majority of people that were reinfected, they found that it was it was mild symptoms. And it's not like proportional with um, fucking I don't know, with like uh, it's not proportional with the regular population. But here's the good news about it. So far, what we've seen is that reinfections are incredibly rare. Right. We've seen like. Maybe the, fir- the first person that's been infected has been reinfected, okay? But we've not seen a spate of reinfections across the world. We yeah. have only seen, like, one, at most, like, a thousand, right, yeah. so far. And that's so a lot, but definitely, when you consider know. how many people could be infected, in, just in general, it's not. I mean, a thousand, it's a big number, but considering like, exactly. what the scope of this whole virus outbreak is, it's not. Exactly. So, the good news is you should still get your vaccine, Right. You should still get it. Um, But at the same time, recognize that if you get COVID-19 yourself, you're not immune. Yeah. And take the precautions around you still. Also, this comes after we talked about the whole herd immunity thing last week as well. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So anyway, uh, Ben, do you want me to come? uh, The one, the last one on here that we talked to talk about? Yeah, do it. So... Uh, actor Chadwick Boseman, uh, 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 Chadwick Boseman died, uh, passed, passed, sorry, passed away. Uh, it was it was yesterday at the day of recording this. Um, from what, at the age of forty three, wasn't it? From colon cancer, I would say. Yeah, it's yeah. just really sad. Yeah. I mean, that's not that old. That's <sighs> yikes. And um, also, you know, uh, he was in the film Forty Two, the Jackie Robinson movie, and passed away on Jackie Robinson Day, which is also that's. It's just really, it's sad in the most ironic and horrible way. Um, also, uh, of course, there's also no verb, you know, Black Panther, other Marvel stuff like that. But just, it's really sad. It's, you know, it's like, <sighs> yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Um, Rip Chadwick Boseman, seriously, like that man, he made one of the... Uh, I'm I'm not black, obviously. None of us, neither no, of us. No, are black, no, but, no. Uh, he he was Black Panther was a good movie <laughs> for yeah. sure. Yeah. But also, he did a lot for a lot of people. Like they showed them that black people can be superheroes. Like yeah. that that was huge, you know. Yeah. Um, and he also was a damn good actor. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace, man. Seriously. Okay, now there's let's also, talk about there's Xbox no good way to transition. Let's just transfer into that. <laughs> there's no good way to transition. We got the Xbox deals of the week. I mean, like, again, even such a sad episode, yeah. it's good to have something kind of, you know, light and somewhat happy. So we got two things coming up. So Xbox deals of the week. So. I should have probably put this segment after because remember next next segment is gonna be my special segment, which I've not, I've still not announced it yet. But I guess kind of spoiler, this week is seventy five percent off on DC games. That is DC comic games. So, uh, but first before before we talk about we have to talk about uh, the current I guess gold deals for the month. Portal Knight's still up there. Overdrive, Mech City Brawl, and Red Faction Two, three very 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 solid games, very enjoyable games. I've played them all, really like them. You know, good games. Uh, we'll have, I think, yeah, I guess we'll have new titles up here uh, in, in the next podcast because it's, it's going to be September when we record the next one. So we'll have, new, we'll have new titles for the month up there now. But right now it's Portal Knights, Overdrive, Mech City, Brawl, and Red Faction 2. 
Now, move on to the deals of the week for DC Comic Games. Batman the Arkham Collection. Now, this is Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and Arkham Knight. The top versions of all those games, all the DLC, the season passes, all type of stuff. Um, you know, three very, very, very good games. It used to be $70. Now, it is only $15. I picked up that deal myself. It's actually been going for the last two weeks. It's actually quite, quite, quite a good deal. Um, it does not have Arkham Origins. That was actually not made by Rocksteady. That was that was that was still a pretty good game. Uh, it was probably not the greatest in the franchise because it was made by a different developer, but it was still a good, a good game overall. Arkham Origins, but again, it's Arkham City. Sorry, Arkham Asylum uh, with all the DLC and stuff like that. Uh, Arkham City with all the DLC and Ar- and Arkham Knight with the season pass and premium version of that all the DLC for that game. All that for fifteen bucks. Now, actually, Arkham City not well, it's all the DLC. It's with without including the Wii U exclusive Metal Catwoman and Metal Batman outfits, and Metal Batman outfits, because those are only on the Wii U. Anyway, uh, moving on, we also have Injustice Two Legendary Edition, which is of course the DC fighting game with all the DLC included in that one. That is um, was sixty bucks, now fifteen bucks, and finally, Lego DC Super Villains. I don't think I need to explain this. It's a Lego game. It's the deluxe edition. Was seventy five dollars. Now is eighteen dollars seventy four cents. Where they got that title from? It I don't know. Probably some weird percentage thing. But yeah, it's a Lego game. DC Super Villains, and yeah, that's that. But now we get to move on to something I've been hyping up for a little while. If you've been paying attention to Instagram, you already know what the special segment is. This is my recap of the DC Fandom event. Now, we have a lot to talk about. It's covered everything from the upcoming, you know, upcoming DC, upcoming DC, upcoming DC game titles to films, to Justice League, the Snyder Cut, to TV show stuff. We all have to talk about, so let's get started. So, um, first, let me, let me get a drink of water very quickly. Sorry about that. In the meantime, let me just say, wear your fucking mask, dumbass. All right, yeah. cool. Uh, it, it puts it on a shirt. Be, be a superhero. Wear a mask. How about that? That's that, I've seen. I've seen shirts that have yes. that. So, 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 something yes. like that on there. I've seen very similar shirts like that on there around. Anyway, anyway. So starting off with the panels again. So these are just the Hall of Hero panels. These are the main panels from the event. There's some side panels I didn't really cover. Also, these are there. If you guys want me to do a extended version on my own video, let me know in the comments or on the Instagram poll. I might run the Wasted on Podcast account. Again, link to the Instagram uh, account in the description below. Um, but yeah, again, these are, these are the panels I think were noteworthy enough to cover on this podcast. And I was taking notes. Again, this, the event started at 10 a.m. On, su- on Saturday morning, last Saturday, and then went to 10 a.m. on Sunday. It's a 24-hour event. I only covered from 10 a.m. on Saturday to 1 a.m. on Sunday, which because after that, kind of went into rebroadcast mode with some recap stuff. Anyway, so let's get started with... Wonder Woman 1984. Now, Chris Pine will be returning as Steve Trevors, who died in the last film. Ben, we actually saw Wonder Woman when it came out in theaters, right? When you were here. Um, at yes, some... we did. I remember. That was, was that? Was we that... saw Aquaman. Oh, I think th- those are two different trips, though, I think. Those are two different. Yeah, those are two different separate visits of you to Watsonville. Uh, like, I think, I think I Aquaman was 2018. That. I think Wonder Woman, that was 20, I want to say 17. Um, we also saw Ferdinand Fer- the Bull. Ferdinand the Bull. Yeah, we we did see that because it was it was funny and stupid. Uh, yeah, because I think like I think like um, Eric was over here and we saw Thor Ragnarok and I saw and I think it's the same winter break I went out to see. Um, or, or I think it was the same year we went to see uh, Wonder Woman. Anyway, anyway, so yeah, Ben and I we saw Wonder Woman. It was a good film, a lot of good action. Anyway, um, now one big thing about these this applies to not only this one but most DC upcoming films films apart from the Snyder Cut of the Justice League. They will be waiting to release this film until theaters reopen properly. Marvel's doing stuff, I think, with, with, with Black Widow, where they want to put it on digital first. No. DC wants to have a proper theater release for Wonder Woman, for The Suicide Squad, another upcoming film. So they're going to wait to put this out until theaters reopen. Or until... Jul- if, if theaters are not open for some reason until July of 2021, then they'll release it digitally. But their plan is to release it in theaters, which I really support. It's a... 
it's just it's just it's a different feeling to see a it's 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 just a different feeling to see a film for the first time in theaters as opposed to at home on a monitor or TV screen. You know, it just just feels different. Also, the costume department is gonna it's they've been working overtime on the costume for this one. Just from what we've seen in the teaser trailer, it's pretty cool. So, the film's set in the nineteen eighties. From you know, also also titled nineteen eighty four. But what yeah, what nineteen eighty four anyway. Um, they, of course, had the styles for, like, you know, you know, characters in the streets will be wearing the styles of the 1980s, because, of course, but also, the outfits for some of the characters, for some of the super characters, uh, super characters being that villains and or heroes, will be inspired by the characters that they wore in the comics at those times. However, they'll be less silly and more, you know, action film based, which is quite nice. Um, anyway, we also have to talk about, yeah, what? Right. Anyway, we also talk about the whole. Uh... Sorry, my dad's home. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Okay. That's what it was in the background. Anyway, so we also talk about the whole. Um... Well, you know, we gotta talk about the whole audience and what they should expect from this film because an audience is the big part of what this movie is. I mean, they have to make a film not just that people will like, but also like, for especially with superhero films, it's a del- delicate balance between. You know, taking stuff from the comics and making it onto film the way people enjoy, and also just pleasing general audiences who haven't read the comics. Um, and they've actually done that because, like, the first film used special effects, but also used practical effects, which DC, a lot, which DC does a lot, in my opinion, a lot better than Marvel when it, when it comes to practical effects. And this film's gonna be doing that a lot better with a higher special effects budget, and also just the action. Like, all the really well choreographed action will be ramped up from the first film, done even better with new characters, including the villain who's gonna be in this film, which is what well, we've seen her so far in some of those teaser tra- in some, in some of the official trailers and teaser trailers shown off way back in eight months ago, and also at this panel during the event, we saw that Cheetah will be in the film, who. Apparently her backstory I'm getting is her back, I'm get, from, at least what I'm seeing from the trailers, her backstory is gonna be just a little bit, but pretty cool. Um, again, of course, her cat feline characteristics will be, I mean, if you've seen, if you're, if you're unfortunate enough to see these horrible CGI that was, um, the musical of Cats in 2019, right, in late 2019, don't worry, the CGI is much better than that. I think I actually used a clip of Cheetah in the intro for this segment as well. Also, Ben, I think, has added, we need to, we, we need it, we, we, we need it like a DC superhero's tennis field. Oh God! Why have you added that, oh, Ben? God. What? Why have you added that to this slide? You added that. Added what to the slide? Where? Uh, n- never mind. I-, I don't know. Either either Ben added that, or I or I typed it. I didn't know what the fuck I was writing. Um, because I. <laughs> I think. I touch your slide. They're not even. They're not even. On. That's true. That's true. So they're for some even. reason, the one woman thing says it now says we need it. We we need it. We need like a DC superhero's tennis field. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna blame I'm gonna blame speech to text for that one because I was actually using speech to text to write this in the panel that way I didn't have to stop the panel to take a look and to actually write it down. Anyway, so Wonder Woman eight nine ninety four bigger budget, bigger action, uh, probably a little bit longer than the first one, and a really cool setting from what we've seen so far. Also balancing out special effects with practical effects, which is always good. Uh, now the first WB Games Montreal announcement. Now this is not done by Rocksteady, who made the Batman Arkham games. Well, it's in the same kind of, kind of thing. This is Gotham Knights. It's a Bat Family game, meaning that Batman isn't in it because Batman is dead. However, you're going to get to control characters such as Red Hood, who isn't killing people. So it probably means it's going to probably have. A t- he's for some reason using non-lethal ammunition now. It means it's probably going to be have probably going to have a team ra- a team rating. Anyway, uh, you're, you're Red Hood, Damian Wayne's Robin, Nightwing, and Batgirl. Now this is pretty cool because now normally this type of thing like I, when I saw this game trailer. At first, I was worried it's going to be another games as a service thing. If you don't know what games as a service means, that's where it essentially you can do single player, but it really feels like it should be multiplayer, or you know, you know, it, it's like it's it's a multiplayer game that also includes single player. Because like, this game is both multiplayer and single player. However, according, according to the panel and what we've seen from the gameplay, because we've actually got quite a good shot of the gameplay from the panel, um, it's meant to work with both single player and multiplayer. Too often nowadays, it seems we're getting games that were. Made for multiplayer, but had single player kind of thrown in there. You know what I mean? It, it, it just doesn't seem to really mesh that well. Especially games that, like, you know, Tom Clancy's The Division or whatever, right? That game was, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's The Division. Or is it, or I'm thinking of Wildlands. Anyway, you know, the more recent Tom Clancy games that are online open world, those are cool. But the single player, it kind of feels kind of lame. 
You know, this game is meant to run in both single player and multiplayer. Speaking of how the game is meant to run, we gotta talk about specs, 120 FPS, 4K, running on the Xbox Series X, PS5, and PC. No Switch release, the game is set to be dropping in 2021. What? Well, I mean, to be fair, the game is set to be five times, they just, for scale, it's gonna be larger than Arkham, it's gonna be larger than Arkham Knight was. It's gonna be a massive, massive open world, like GTA 5 size open world. I can't really imagine running that on the Switch, especially not with frame. I mean, if you ever played the Outer out the Outer Worlds on open, and the Outer Worlds isn't really an open world game. It has several large hub worlds, but that game ran like uh, garbage on the Switch. I mean, the Switch can do open like Breath of the yeah. Wild. That's an open world game, but that's also running on more cartoon based graphics. It has its own kind of graphics. This is more slightly more realistic looking graphics. Anyway, they might they maybe they'll make a Switch version later, but right now just to expect PC Series X and PS Five. At 120 FPS, 4K, which is, you know, pretty much what those systems that are meant to run on. It's decent. It's a standard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, but yeah, it, it's also... Now, the game is single part of said before, also multiplayer. Now, take Fallout 76, for example, right? Bethesda made a huge mistake for that game, which was just taking the single player engine they used for Fallout 4 and Skyrim and making that multiplayer. No, no, no. Warner Brothers Game Montreal has designed a brand new engine for this for this um for this game so it can run multiplayer properly and not end up like Fallout 76 was which is an absolute disaster and finally while i mentioned this is not being made by rocksteady it kind of is so it's being made by warner brothers game montreal who made the the previously mentioned batman arkham origins which wasn't a bad game it was still a very 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 good game with some awesome boss fights that deathstroke boss fight was fantastic um, it just wasn't maybe as well put together as other, as well as, well as other Arkham games. Now, that same studio is making this game. However, some of the Rocksteady team members who worked on Arkham Origins, especially the people who did some of the lead design and story design for that game, uh, and, uh sorry, 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 um, sorry, some of the, um, sorry, yeah, some of the members of Rocksteady who worked on Arkham City, right, who did the story design for that game, have made their way over to this team. And Arkham City was probably one of the best Arkham games, was, is, at least in my opinion, was the best of the three Rocksteady Arkham games. And so, some of the team that's made the best game in that franchise has made their way over to help with this franchise, which is... I'm just really enjoying that. Also, of course, I actually said the last one. This is, this is actually the last thing. The game is going to have RPG elements. We've seen them... We've seen what looks like level counters on enemies, which is... It definitely has a change from Arkham, which, everyone, which, which the whole level... You know, the enemy difficulty is depending on what difficulty the game was at. Uh, but it means you can probably, it means probably be able to level up your characters, upgrade their gadgets and tech. We've seen different skins for different characters, like different suits, different different armor abilities, um, all that sort of stuff. Also, they've already said no in-game. I mean, there, there probably will be DLC, no doubt, but no microtransaction, no buying currency, no buying XP, which is good. Um, but, you know, also everyone has a vehicle. For instance, Damian Wayne can teleport around the map. He's in Justice League's teleporter. You got the Batgirl's Bat Cycle. And we have yet to see whether or not we can upgrade those, although I hope we can. Upgrading gadgets and tech in a Batman game where so much since they don't have superpowers, you know, their stuff is so based off tech. That would be awesome to see. Anyway, let's move on to the Suicide Squad movie panel. Now, Ben, did you ever see Suicide Squad when it came out in 2016? Or was it 2017? I never did, but I heard it was really bad. It wasn't bad. It just was overhyped. It, the, the, I mean, Jared Leto's Joker is creepy as fuck. It's not very good, in my opinion. Um... <laughs> Also, I mean, the special effects weren't great, but some of the characters, some of the cast nailed their role perfectly. And it was, it had, it was overall pretty meh with some good elements. Now, this, this, now, uh, also, Ben, do you, 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 saw, you saw Guardians of the Galaxy, didn't you, at some point? I did. So, James Gunn is direct, who directed Guardians of the Galaxy, is directing The Suicide Squad, which is an upcoming DC film. It is an upcoming DC comic film. He also direct. he's also, he's also, he also He's also working on Guardians of the Galaxy 3 as well, apparently. So he's working on both DC and Marvel films at the same time. I don't really know how that works, but okay, cool. Anyway, they're focusing in on some of the things that actually were good in the original Suicide Squad film in 2016. Um, a lot of the cast has been replaced with, with Idris Elba as, I believe, Deadshot, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, we have Margot Robbie returning as Harley Quinn. In my opinion, she is Harley Quinn. Margot Robbie's portrayal of Harley Quinn is fantastic. She's psychotic she's crazy she's awesome she's funny and she's also very brutal with people she has no problems killing people it's just fucking awesome i mean also in terms of the film rating it probably will be r i mean you have a team of villains trying to save the world and do good but also they're villains they're gonna be killing people 
Um, and also, again, practical effects. They're not using special effects for explosives. They're using actual explosives, which is pretty, pretty cool. We're looking for twenty one. We're looking for a. Um, we're looking for a twenty twenty one release, possibly here, maybe twenty twenty two. Uh, it's also, it's, uh, the, the film is defined as a kind of like a gritty 1970s style war movie, which is, you know, a lot more action based and probably a lot more death. So again, expect an R-rated rating for this film. But also, James Gunn has talked about how he's felt, he's like, with, he didn't say this in these exact words, obviously he would never, he would never like trash talk Marvel, a company who's actually, he's, who's also currently, again, still working for in some respect. But like, he said that he's felt more free to do what he wants with this product than in other films he's worked on because... You know, Marvel has more of a family-friendly vibe to them than DC does in a lot of ways. And in this film, he's he's just, he, he's just free to whatever he wants. And he, you know, he's mentioned genitals will go flying and heads will go rolling. So that's, that's uh, pretty good. So I expect to see a lot of... I, I'm actually really hyped up for this one. It's a revamped team, and including some very bizarre characters from the comics. I mean, you're going to get to see Polka Dot Man, all right? Someone who is just an absolutely weird and bizarre character who I cannot wait to see. It's got a very large cast. Some of them who I guarantee will not make it to the film. There's going to be a lot of death here, but it should be pretty good. All right, now moving on to, I think the kind of thing that kind of just spearheaded this whole convention was the Justice League, the Snyder Cut. Now, this was something brought on by fans. This would never happen if fans did not care enough to get this thing made. They cared enough to, you know, get this thing up and running, various Kickstarters, various, you know, freaking, you know, uh, for, uh, you know, various Patreons, Kickstarters, funding for this thing, and various petitions online got the Justice League Santa Cut off the ground. Now, talk about distribution, right? It's got an HBO Max exclusive deal, which most of DC's content will be on HBO Max starting next year or so. It will be released in four parts on HBO Max over the course of 2021, 2020, and 2022, Hopefully, because they still need to put a bunch of stuff together, but still, that's the hopeful time frame. Four parts, and of course, once part four releases, there will be a way to watch it all in one big part. And after part four releases, after they have the whole thing put together, like one big collection, on one, and you know, to watch it in one big part, it'll also be distrib it's distributed on Blu ray, DVD, and Xbox video, with other ones maybe coming soon. Because as, as far as I know, Ben, I don't know if you know about this, is, is HBO Max, is that, is that US only, Ben? Do you know? I think so. I think it might be. So yeah, there, there's no way they're gonna like limit it to just US. So expect if you're outside the US, expect um, probably Amazon Prime, maybe Netflix, because like for instance, outside the US, because like Titans is the show Titans, DC's Titans show is a US exclusive on on the DC Universe app, but outside the US, it's on it's on it it's on um, Netflix. So so yeah, okay, it's gonna be uh, yeah, Snyder Cut will be on HBO Max in the US as well as DVD, Blu-ray, Xbox Video eventually, with some other things coming for other countries, because they're not going to make it U.S. exclusive, because that's just not really fair. I mean, this is the film that a lot of people around the world want to see, the, or what we claim, to, as, as what DC fans think of as the definitive version. Anyway, the film will be approximately four hours long, all said and done. It's going to be a much longer cut of the film. Fucking um, four? Whoa! You're going to need a catheter through that whole thing. Holy shit. Stick that's why... Dick, you know? I mean, to be fair, Avengers Endgame was three and a half hours. And to be fair, they're also working on the okay, pacing yeah, thing. yeah, but to be fair, Avengers Endgame was too long. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. They had, they had they, they, they split over two movies. It was still, like, an hour or two long. Anyway, though, that, again, that, that's why they're releasing it in four parts. Um. Anyway... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's gonna be a long one, but, you know, it's, it's good for people, like, people who watch superhero films tend to enjoy movie marathons, it's kind of perfect for that, at least in my experience, the people I've talked to about some of the stuff, uh, I'll probably, I'll, I, I will be getting my free, my free trial of, of uh, not Hulu Plus, of, of HBO Max just to watch this, because, hell, yes. Alright, so, um, this, it, it, it will probably get a PG-13 rating, maybe, Maybe an R rating, we don't know. Um, I mean, when it, when it comes to, like, CGI stuff, they're going to be doing, uh, again, they've actually been reshooting some of the effects to be a lot better than it was. I mean, the effects are already still pretty good. I mean, when you got a guy who's a, a villain who's, like, 50 feet tall, you obviously can't have that be a real person because no real human is, if you didn't know this, 50 feet tall. Uh, but, again, they're, they're, they're reshooting some of the special effects, getting it to work out a little better, getting it to be a little bit smoother because the film was actually apparently, I guess, rushed production anyway. Um... But again, we're going to get to see a lot more backstory involving The Flash, because the whole thing about The Flash, remember, this film sets up other DC properties, and The Flash, this kind of ties into the whole multiverse thing. I'll get more into that later on in The Flash TV panel, but yeah, The Flash with the whole multiverse thing, 
I mean, Ezra Miller is awesome as The Flash. He's funny. And also, we have a Flash movie coming out in 2022, which this film kind of sets up. So we're going to explore more about, more about his um, abilities. And, you know, it's just going to be pretty cool to see that in, in this film. And just to quote uh, Zack Snyder on what are they going to be planning to do with The Flash in the Snyder Cut, uh, something you've never seen before, something to do with his abilities. And this most likely involves him tearing time apart, tearing the multiverse apart, and creating multiple realities, which is pretty cool. Or just, you know, opening the bridge between multiple universes. That's set, so, you know, that, that kind of sets the tone for multiple films. So, like, think about it. Marvel's been talking about the multiverse for a while, but they haven't really done anything with it in the MCU. I mean, they kind of did some time traveling stuff, but that doesn't really count. It's not, like, not really a proper multiverse. DC could be the first one to actually bring that to life in, with this film or with The Flash in 2022. So we'll see how that goes. But again, the Snyder Cut, this is going to be so good. I'm really excited for this one. It's just, it's just, it's just going to be very enjoyable in my opinion. And we've been waiting for this since since pretty much actually since like the first day the, the original Justice League came out in what was it, 2016. We've been waiting for this thing for a while. This thing is slated for 2021 slash 2022 release date. Now... Mm. So I got some, gotta get some water. Moving on to the Flash TV panel. Now, the Flash has been going for seven seasons. It's in the Arrowverse, aka the CW superhero DC verse, with like Supergirl and with a Black Lightning and Arrow. Arrow actually racked up, wrapped up at, at, at the end of season eight, I think it was like in the end of 2019. Um, that, that show's done, but the Flash is still going, even after the whole Crest and the Infinite thing. And this season is, we didn't really get a whole lot of stuff, we didn't really know about this. Um, season 7 will include a lot more, it, it will pretty much just be the build-up of what we explored in seasons 5 and 6, and pretty much throughout the entire series. Unclear whether this will be the final season, it probably, it, it feels like it might be, um, although I wouldn't mind if it wasn't, because it's a great show, so I, w I hope it continues, but, um, you know, they're going to be building up on some, some of the characters and stuff, that they, they talked about a lot more... About, about, you know, exploring the character of Iris West a lot more, exploring a lot more character backstories, a lot more backstory for Cisco, stuff like that. You know, characters people like exploring their backstories and having that build up to a big conclusion for the season, which will be pretty cool. Now, the shooting of season seven has been delayed because of coronavirus. No idea when that's going to continue. They have no clue. So this season could be delayed for quite a while. Now, in this day and age, we don't get a lot of... Blu-ray exclusives, apart from bonus content. Even nowadays, like, bonus editions of digital films don't include all the Blu-ray or DVD bonus menu content for some reason. I don't quite know why. But we don't get a lot of DVD or Blu-ray exclusives in this day and age. They always seem to make their way to, vis to, like, dig to digital via either Xbox Video, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, whatever. Wherever you, wherever, you get the, wherever you can get the show, right? However, when they release a Season 6 DVD and Blu-ray of, well, Season 6 of The Flash, there's going to be an episode on there called Kiss Kiss Breach Breach. Which is already on season six. That's that that episode's available on all the formats of season six. However, there's also gonna be a bonus version, which is kind of a murder mystery noir black and white version, which we saw a bit of that on the panel, and it looks freaking awesome. I just I just like I love the whole vibe, it kinda gives the thing being set in black and white. Pretty cool. So yeah, Kiss Kiss, Breach Breach, Black and White Edition will be a exclusive to DVD and Blu-ray. I mean, yeah, someone will probably rip it and put it on the internet, but DC themselves or CW, they don't have, they have, they've got no plans to distribute this, to, to, to like actually distribute the um, black and white version on digital at all, ever. Um, and again, hopefully they'll start in 2021, but we really don't know. Also, Godspeed will probably return as a, uh, as a villain in, you know, season seven, which that's pretty Is cool. Is he just fast? Is very fast, fast very God? evil, just very disturbing. Um, and also, you know, it, it's just, it's going to be pretty cool to see. Uh, and again, of course, again, just like most DC budgets, the budget's been going up for this one as well. And, um, again, this might be the final season of Flash, we aren't quite sure, they've not said that, uh, but we'll see. Also, as I mentioned about the multiverse thing, in the Crisis on Infinite Earth special, which is kind of like a crossover, cross, cross, a, a, a kind of like a CW vs. crossover special, Ezra Miller, the Flash from the Justice League, from the DC film universe, did make an appearance. As well as the Flash from the 1990s Flash series on CBS, I think it was. Oh boy. Um, as well as the characters from Titans. So now that we know that all the, we know that the that all the live action universes, be it the Titans one, the Doom Patrol one, the one on CW, and the film universe are all linked, which is pretty cool. I've put that together in one big crossover event, which was the Crisis on Infinite Earth story event. Now moving on to Black Adam. I think we all probably know who Dwayne the Rock Johnson is. He's been known for a lot of things over his career, and now, I guess most recently, acting. Or not acting, depending on what film you see him in. <laughs> yeah, some of his acting is not exactly... I don't get it. 
His, I do not get it. His acting isn't always great. He's just, he's more noticed oh. as being an action guy. Anyway, point being, he's been playing the role of Black Adam. Now he's been ask he's actually been asking DC to be in this film since he actually like he originally brought them the concept. Like D- Dwayne Johnson came up with this concept ten ish years ago, and it's been in development hell for that long. Multiple different planning stages of production. They've been going through it, and it's set to. Well, they're starting to start filming pretty soon, and it's pretty cool. We actually got to see, we got to see some cool stuff with it on the panel. He, Dwayne Johnson is always pretty funny. He does some pretty good comedy stuff. But, again, probably a very heavy PG-13 raid. Don't think they're going to go R with this one. Although, Black Adam is never really a hero. He's somewhere between anti-hero and villain, depending on where you look at him. Uh, as a, depending, on, depending on what properties at the time, different comics. Depending, like, different comics, different adaptations. I kind of, like, you know, shit off different ways. Although he's just known as a, a very ruthless person who will do whatever to protect his country and the people that he cares for. So that's not really villainous, but at the same time, it's not really a hero either. So expect some death, but also probably expect a very heavy PG-13 non-R rating. The Justice Society of America, a.k.a. the, pre, the, the I guess the precursor to the Justice League, who we've all seen in shows like Stargirl, another great show from DC, by the way, um, will be in this film in some respect. So this, that means that this is set sometime... 1950s, 60s-ish, so it's not going to be modern, which is pretty pretty interesting to think about. Um, and yeah, uh, this is a pretty cool one. Pretty funny. Black Adam is, you know, violent, but also a pretty funny character. I want to see more of him in the future. This will be hopefully pretty cool. Um, you know, just, just, to see, just to see a character who is not a hero, but is not exactly a villain. I mean, Batman is not a hero by any means, but he's also not an anti-hero. So... This guy, Black Adam tends to bridge the gap between between anti-hero and villain quite often, so we'll see which... It's interesting, because again, like, they've not really confirmed what direction they're going with this, so it's going to be interesting to see how we go from here. Now, the Titans panel. This would be pretty short, because we didn't really... They didn't really... They didn't really talk about anything we didn't already know for Titans coming up. We have Jason Todd will become Red Hood. Now, we also have a bunch of other, like... This, se- this season is already going to be... For season three, is already pretty packed with stuff, so... Do we have room for Jason Todd to die then come back to life in an art in a season that's already so packed? Probably not. That's why he could, he kind of got jaded with the Titans and left towards the end of the second season of the show, meaning that it might be a more a, more of an emotional betrayal. It's like again, he became Red Hood after he was betrayed and died because of it, and wanted vengeance on Batman for that. So it might be more of an emotional death rather than a physical death. As I think, like cramming an actual whole death and rebirth thing in the space of a couple episodes into a full season like this might be a bit much. So it might be kind of like an emotional death, which makes a lot more sense, especially since the show is a little bit more grounded in reality, which I actually really enjoy. Uh, the other ad- adaptations of Teen Titans, or, or really the other adaptations of DC shows have been, or DC Comics have been, for that matter. Also, Blackfire is confirmed as the villain for season three, from we've seen of her from the panels and this from, the, from last weekend during the event. I'm pretty psyched for that. P- pretty cool appearance from we've seen from her so far. Um... Now, Scarecrow, he is a terrifying villain. He fucks with your mind. Mental just makes, like, he's the type of guy who will make you think you're killing your villain and instead you're raping kinda, and murdering your friends. That scares me. Yeah, no, he... Like a crow. Yeah, no, he's just... <coughs> sorry. That was pretty, pretty, pretty okay. I'm actually, sorry, yeah. I'm so I've sorry. I've heard worse, I've heard worse. But still, like, he's a pretty... He's the type of guy who'll think you, he'll, he'll like, use fear gas and talk something. he make you think you're doing good, but instead you're raping and murdering your friends. That's, that's, it, it's really messed up. However, he's actually still locked up, apparently, from what we know in this season, he's going to be locked up in Arkham Asylum. Or whatever, I, I, they said Arkham Asylum, but this, the name of the prison might change. We don't really know. Anyway, he's going to be locked up and working as a character profiler for the, for the uh, police department, which is actually pretty interesting to have kind of like a criminal, a criminal being consulted on the motions of other criminals. It's kind of... Kind of cool. I mean, we've seen that premise played with a lot of times in various properties, but it's pretty cool to see it in the superhero take. It's pretty cool. Especially with such a messed up character. Um, and yeah, of course, of course. okay, again, more practical effects this season, higher budget. This is going to be pretty cool. The season will probably be on HBO Max and um, the DC Universe app as well as in the US as well as Netflix in the UK. Similar to how it's been done with uh, season two of Doom Patrol. Moving on to Suicide... I think it's the penultimate, penultimate panel here. Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. Now, this is Rocksteady's game. Holy fucks. Okay, again, graphics, 420k, uh, you know, 20, 120, 120 FPS. Not 20 FPS. No, buy that. 120 FPS. Um, so, yeah, so expect good graphics. PS5, Xbox Series X, PSC, PC release, that type of stuff. Now, this is pretty cool. 
It's a four-player game that also has single-player. When you're playing in single-player, new advanced AI is specifically programmed to take the brunt of this massive open world in set in Metropolis for this game. New advanced AI will be so like pretty much like you'll be playing through single-player, and at that time, if you're playing like again. It's one through four player multiplayer, but if you're playing single player, the AI will control the other four characters, and you can switch them anytime. You can switch between Killer Shark, Harley Quinn, Deadshot, and Captain Boomerang at any time. Now, as you can probably tell, kill the Justice League. You're playing against a Suicide Squad. Expect an M rating. You're gonna be killing a lot of people, probably. That's kind of the whole point of their, Yay. Th- of their mission. Can Superman die? I hate Superman. Well, he does... Uh, again... It, from, just from what we saw in the teaser trailer, it appears to be a kind of um, a possessed Justice League, which we've seen before. We've seen Superman go rogue, go evil, go you know angry a lot, a lot in recent years with you know with the with the on screen adaptations. We've seen it in games like Injustice, but still a possessed Justice League that you get to kill. Pretty cool. This is technically speaking the Arkham universe, but it might be the multiverse. We don't quite know if it's set in the same universe as Arkham City Origins, uh, Night or Asylum, but it might be a multiverse anyway. Uh, so meaning that Batman might not be dead in this universe. Who knows? Anyway, uh, yeah, again, Superman in the trailer. He kills an innocent civilian by melting his face. That's interesting. That's, uh, that's, he tortures him and kills him. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, so expect to see a lot of violence and death in this one. It's an M-rated game. Again, this, again for the first time ever, we're going to get a game that's taking place outside of, Ar- outside of Gotham by Roxy, which is set in Arkham. Which is, sorry, no, sorry, sorry, it's set in Metropolis, which is the, it's a Superman city. But yeah, expect to be killing a lot of people in this one. Again, you can pretty much swap between characters at any time in single player mode, and that's like you could be flying around with Deadshot with a jetpack, and then all of a sudden switch to Harley Quinn, who's beating up people on the rooftop of the baseball bat. That's it's pretty awesome. It's very fluid multiplayer. In single, oh, sorry, it, it, a, a multiplayer. We don't know if the character switching is gonna be a thing. In multiplayer, probably not. But uh, in single player, at least, it's gonna be very fluid switching between characters. We've seen a little bit of that it just in the teaser trailer, which is pretty cool. Now. One thing they actually did for the panel, which I thought was pretty cool, they did, like, a live-action skit. They had, like, the fictional characters talking to, I think it was Will Arnett. They had, like, Will Arnett in a dialogue with fictional characters. It was pretty funny. And Harley Quinn kind of mentioned something that might be a little bit foreshadowing for some gameplay. She said, mentioned, Kid, could you be stealing people's powers and using them? I'd like to see that. We've seen that in stuff like infam- Infamous games in the past, like the Infamous Second Son, for example. Great game. Uh, but again, all this other stuff. So again, violent gameplay, brand new engine created for this, made by Roxanne, who made the award-winning Arkham series. Cannot wait for this. Release date, sometime in 2022. And, you know, I'm just expecting... I'm, I'm going to try... I don't, I, I, I don't want to get too hyped up about this in case it doesn't deliver, although I think it definitely will. Because, I mean, they've put so much... They've been working on this since 2016. It's a big development. And... They've not been going back and redoing stuff, so they've been like it's been actively working on it since 2016, which is pretty awesome. Also, the graphics that we saw from, just from the teaser trailer are just awesome. That that's just the beta graphics engine as well. Anyway, now we get to move on to one of the I guess probably the biggest new film, which is of course the Batman. I saw the Joker, the film the Joker that came out was it 2018. I really enjoyed that. I liked the dark tone that took. The Batman will be very dark as well. Now we have Robert Pattinson as Batman. Now this was a very controversial casting choice. He's known for, well, Twilight and being in Harry Potter briefly and other things. Not necessarily being a dark, brooding superhero kind of character. However, as this is set in Batman, like very early Batman, like not his origin story, so we're not going to have to witness his parents dying. I think that we've seen in movies a hundred times before for Batman. No, no, no. This is after he's already become Batman, but he's struggling to, he's struggling to get used to the whole role of saving people, really. Um, and again, people don't really trust him yet because he's still a vigilante. So, yeah. But, so again, I think just what we've seen of him, he plays young, young-ish Bruce Wayne pretty well. He definitely sells the whole billion, the billionaire, yet also condescending asshole look, but also plays Batman very well. His Batman voice definitely sounds better than Christian Bale's. Yikes! That, that I mean, the the Dark Knight trilogy was a good trilogy in my opinion of, of films, but Christian Bale's Batman voice was not good. Um, but from like what we've seen of it, it's gonna be dark. It's gonna be brutal. Uh, I mean, also as I before, like he's still very early on. The police department doesn't trust him yet. He's still a vigilante. He's still doing things that are technically speaking illegal, even though he's helping people. And also. I don't. We don't really expect the Joker to show up in this one, but we do get to see at least at least, at least what we've been told. We're gonna get to see the 
I guess, like, some of the villains become villains. I wouldn't really class Catwoman as a villain, but we do get to see Selena and Kyle become, you know, the thief known as Catwoman. We also get to see stuff like the Penguin and other really cool characters here for villains. Um, now, in terms of where it's being filmed, now, imagine if you saw Times Square being used as a location of a Batman film. You obviously know, okay, this version of Gotham is supposed to be New York. To get away from all that, they're shooting most of it in Edinburgh to use the Gothic architecture there, but then filling it around it with... They're going to take buildings from San Francisco, New York, Dubai, various buildings from around the world, making one massive city that feels, it feels kind of familiar, but also isn't one city, which is really, really cool. Like San Francisco, huh? Uh, also, yeah. Also, 30 minutes since you started this. Yeah, okay. So. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah th- th- we got maybe, maybe, back, maybe like three minutes left. Anyway, um, but yeah, so okay, pretty much, it's, yeah, it's San Francisco. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very good Marvel example, actually, to be honest, Ben. Hmm. That is a Marvel example, the Big Hero 6 reference. Um, so that's a, is that Marvel? Yeah, it's Marvel. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Also, the guy who voiced Hero actually plays uh, Garfield Logan on Titans. Okay, um, anyway, <coughs> at least I'm pretty sure. Anyway, uh, anyway, so, yeah, to, uh, anyway, back to the thing. Like, anyway, the city, it's meant to feel like it's going to be, it's, it's going to be, you know, using the Gothic architecture of Edinburgh, but filling in with different, like, references, like, like different, like, CGI buildings, but, like, High class, like CGI, like like full like full of like, scanned out models, not just like recreation, like full of like, scanned models of them around, just to make. Sh- I mean, for one thing, it stops them from having to go to like flying to different countries just to shoot one city. You know what I mean? But also, like, we've seen we've seen different versions of Gotham in the past. We saw Tim Burton's version of Gotham in the nineties, and which was claustrophobic. So many statues. Oh my god, city planning must have been a fucking nightmare. But it was still pretty creative. We saw the more down to earth one in the Dark Knight trilogy. We also seen we also seen the one in the DC in, in the DCU in more recent years, but this should be pretty cool to take a look at. Also, again, expect dark, expect brutality. It is just gonna be so so cool, and that's about it for this segment. That's all I got really for the DC fandom. So let's move on to the quarantine media update. I'm excited for all these properties. Hell yes, let's go. Oliver, you want to read yours first? All right. So for mine, I got uh, you know, uh, okay, yeah. Okay. So for power, uh, power rock playlist for my music. That's um, not what it says. Shut up, Ben. I got power rock playlist. I got uh, Green Day, <laughs> Weezer. What it says. Green Day. Uh, I'm not reading that. Green Day, Weezer. Um, the drum strong is an independent artist, not just Ben. I see what you're highlighting. Stop that. So Green Day, Weezer, Billy Drum Strong, all of our rock stuff. Um, Ferris covers Hallelujah because I don't know. Also, the tra- the trailer for the Justice League Snyder Cut. The way they used Hallelujah in that trailer was actually incredible. Um, and just, you know, a lot of rock music. A lot of stuff from our workout playlist, that type of stuff. Um, again, link to my Power Rock playlist in the description below. Anyway, we also have games, Fallout 4, MLB The Show 20, The Batman Arkham Collection, uh, Forza, and that's really about it. Not much else apart from that. Um, oh, yeah, also Injustice 2. Uh, TV, Titans, Doom Patrol, Stargirl, uh, again, still watching, still rewatching Sherlock, uh, Giants games, and other such things like that, uh, you know, just pretty much the stuff, pretty much the exact same thing I was watching episode 18, and film, um, uh, nothing, I've watched nothing, Ben, what's up with you, what do you got? Okay, so, for my slide, I've played Animal Crossing and Fall Guys, I haven't played Fall Guys, I was just, like, watching videos of it, but I want to get it soon. It's really good. Oliver, I don't know if you can play it because your uh, internet's pretty bad. Thanks, Biasat. Um, for television, I've been watching Legend of Korra. I, uh, in the past few days, I've started watching this thing about drugs. I totally forget what it's called. Oh, The Business of Drugs. It's on Netflix. Both of them are on Netflix. Teenage Brown Hairs is really bad. The original name was Slutty Teenage Brown Hairs. It's really bad. It's like one of the worst shows I've ever seen. Um, I watched the entire season because, obviously, I like watching shitty things. It's about two prep school girls in the South that have to deal with high school as well as being bounty hunters and all the shit that happens in the South. So, you know, it's pretty good. Um, it's a somewhat interesting premise that I'm whatever. guessing gets ruined very badly. Oh, it doesn't get ruined. No, it just gets, um, it's very predictable. It's very uh, predictable. Right. Anyways, so for songs, I've been listening to the new BTS track, the new Twice track, which are both K-pop, sorry, apologies. Rich Brian, who used to be known as this other name that I, I don't really want to say, um, is he's very um he's changed and then this the killer's new album like the killer's new album it's called imploding the mirage it's pretty good i enjoy it um you gotta listen to it 
And that's all I have to say. All right. Now, um, so, you know, we're always looking for new viewer mail. Uh, so in order to replace the wild man Oliver segment, we're probably going to need twice the amount of uh, viewer mails we normally have. And, you know, two times zero is still zero. So pretty much anything that you normally stick on a dildo to shove up via set. Send to Jenkins123, Jenkins123 at gmail.com. That's right, Jenkins123, Jenkins123 at gmail.com. Make sure to send twice as much as you normally would. And thank you so much. We're out. Poop goblins.